On this episode, we'll be reviewing the West Mountain Radio Computer Battery Analyzer and its application for amateur radio use in the field. Hello, my name is John Jacobs, W7DBO, and this is the Ham Radio 360 Field Radio Podcast. This is a live stream, so if I make some flubs or if I uh, mess up some words, we're just going to go ahead and go with it because I am streaming live for the first time on YouTube. Now, as I mentioned with the review of the CBA 4 or Computer Battery Analyzer 4, that's this device right here, uh, this is a device that I recently acquired that uh, helps you put your batteries under load, so it's a test device, and it lets you know how your battery is performing. Now, in the field, we often have anecdotal evidence of how our batteries are performing. Uh, over time, we start to question, is this something that needs to be replaced? Is it performing as expected? And like I said, it's just anecdotal. We don't really have anything solid to go by except our impressions of the battery. Well, what this CBA4 does is gives you scientific graft response of your battery under a constant load and let you know if this is something that should be replaced or reconditioned. So going over to their website here, uh, I have the CBA4, which is this item, and then also there's some other items you can get like an amplifier, which you really don't need under uh, these testing conditions that it puts it under a 500 watt or a 1000 watt load, which I don't really need to do. Uh, it comes with the standard uh, software included. There is an enhanced software that's quite interesting because you can understand if you put it under a constant load versus uh, putting it under a simulated load, like a duty cycle use, and that'll let you know more exactly how your performance of your battery is going uh, based on how you use the battery in the field, because obviously in the field we don't do uh, a constant load. So that's a great enhancement to their program that you can get an additional license for. Uh, like I said, in the graph, it's going to give you this graph, and so this, these letters are kind of small here, so I'm going to go and tell you what they are. Uh, this is volts uh, going from the bottom up on this axis, and then over this, it's amp hours over time. So as you can see here, this is an SLA battery. You get that typical sloping diminished return off it. Uh, its initial hit, and then this red line is over time how this battery is performing in amp hours. Now we'll go ahead and go over to this other graph. I put a LifePo4 from BioNO Power under load, and so you get that initial load, but then you get that nice constant voltage right in the sweet spot where we want our batteries to operate field radio. And then at the end, then you get that rapid sharp drop off of the battery. So uh, originally I mentioned also, this lets you know how your battery is performing and if it should be replaced. So in this graph uh, I have here, this first red line is this battery, uh, I knew it was old, it hadn't been conditioned or treated properly, uh, so I had decided to go ahead and put this under a torture test. So this first line was an initial charge and its performance, very poor performance. The next line, uh, green line, voltage drop over time of amp hours, uh, a, a remarkably better performance once I ran the conditioning program on the charger. So then I decided, well, this is a battery and replace anyways because I'm still not getting performance out of it. So I ran the conditioner again, and I ran the conditioner again, and I ran the conditioner again. And so on the third test, I saw another marked improvement, but on the fourth test, interestingly enough, I saw a reduction in performance. So that tells me that this battery has been worked as far as it can go. So since this is a live stream, and if anybody's watching this, because we didn't really advertise this much, uh, go ahead, or if you're watching this uh, later on the recording, let me know in the comment section, is this something that you find that will be helpful for you in uh, your field radio use and evaluating your batteries? And while you're there, also please remember to subscribe to this channel. Click the notification icon, you'll get notifications of live streams like this. And also when our podcast that releases every other Thursday, uh, you can listen to that podcast here. Now, another great benefit of this is not only can you uh, test your batteries, but you can also test your solar panels. Now, in the recent years, we've seen a proliferation of unbranded, rebranded, uh, same panel marketed under multiple brands, especially coming from Amazon and eBay and uh, AliExpress, and we're not really sure of the performance of these panels. 
Well, what this device can do is you can also connect it to your solar panels and you can find that uh, is the panel performing as specified. And even if you do find a tech spec out there for your panel, uh, is it the same panel that you buy today or when you get another panel? So this is a great benefit to uh, those of us that use solar panel in the field. Uh, we can understand how our panels are performing and then also run it under varying conditions to know what sunlight in our geographic location does versus partly cloudy in our geographic location because it obviously changes as you move around. And so I'm going to switch back over to their website and show you a graph. Uh, this is a graph from a solar panel. And so you can see as you put more amps, so amps is on the bottom, watts is on the left. So as we put a load on this five watt panel, uh, you can see this comes to a point and then a sharp drop off. What this drop off is, is what you commonly see with solar panels is the more amps you put on it, you hit a point of diminishing return and you actually get poor performance out of your panel. This is why when you're looking at solar charge controllers, you see MPPT or multi power point tracking. What your solar charge controller is doing, instead of just trying to pull as much energy out of the panel, it's constantly analyzing and looking for that sweet spot up here at the top to know that this is where we're getting the most energy out of this panel. And so that's a great benefit you can get from uh, these, those MPPT controllers. Now let's go ahead and I'm going to switch to my overhead camera and show you a closer look of this. We have the base unit. Uh, this is simply just a heat sink. And then on top of the heat sink is a muffin fan to release the heat because this is going to be drawing energy from your battery so it's got to cool it. Uh, one side is simply the USB uh, pole. And then on the other side is your power poles uh, where you connect the battery. Uh, this is used for calibration and temperature sensors. So I'm not really using that right now, but the power poles. So what we're going to do today in this test is I have the Biano Power. This is a nine amp hour battery. Now I've ran this test several times in testing this recording. Uh, so this battery is not topped off. So I'm not gonna run the full test. So I'm just gonna go ahead and uh, hook up to the battery here and we'll bring up the software program. So let me switch over to my desktop. There we go. Okay, so the program, launch the program, hit start new test. Uh, it's gonna come up and ask you what kind of battery it is. I've already got this pre-figured out to save some time, uh, but it's a LifePo4 battery, 12.8 uh, volts, four cells. Uh, capacity is nine amp hour, I didn't put in the weight. I gave it a test. On amplifier, you wanna make sure you select the no amplifier. Uh, that's because you do not have that additional amplifier. Uh, you're just using the amplifier that's in the unit. Uh, cutoff voltage, I have it at 10 volts. Let me go 11.7. Uh, and then test amps, I'm gonna put a nine amp hour draw on this battery. Now, let's go ahead and hit start. And you can hear the muffin fan uh, come on and that's uh, starting to draw power off the battery. And you got a red light, green light saying that it's on. So there's our initial hit uh, of amps. And then now we're kind of coming down and we're gonna settle in right now. I'm looking at it, 12.5 uh, volts. And so now we're measuring amp hours over time. So a great benefit uh, to this unit is if you have it before you purchase a battery, uh, get that fresh new battery, get it out of the box, get it charged, and then run this test and get a baseline for your specific battery and you know what to expect when it was fresh out of the box. And then go ahead and charge it back up and put it into use. Uh, label the battery somehow and then label this file and save it uh, on your desktop or somewhere. And then a year later, six months later, depending on how much you use the battery, go ahead and run the test again and you see your baseline and then you see your performance. Uh, and it, if you really wanna be geeky about it, uh, track how many times you charged and recharged and to know how many duty cycles you're getting out of the battery. And so once again, there you can see that LifePo 4 just performs so great, uh, just holding that voltage. We're still holding at 12.416 over time. Uh, like I said, I'm not gonna run this battery all the way because the stream would go way too long uh, to diminish this battery. And uh, so I'm just gonna go ahead and stop the test there. 
And once it's done, uh, you'll get that just tell you to disconnect the battery. And so I'll say, okay, and I'll pull the battery, being careful not to touch that heat sink. And then that muffin fan is going to continue to run. So don't be concerned that um, it's still trying to pull energy out of nothing and you're damaging the device. It's just self-cooling at this point. So we'll go ahead and let that run and I'll come back here to full screen. So this is, uh, my, like I said, first live stream. So please comment and let me know uh, if you enjoyed this product, uh, what you plan on, if you got one of these, what would you use it for? And also give me uh, suggestions on what other products you want uh, seen reviewed and given the work through for field radio. Some products we're going to do here in the studio, uh, some we're going to take out in the field and record and come back. And also please be sure to subscribe, uh, give me a, a thumbs up, and then also in the description uh, later when I archive this, uh, I'm going to have a link to an email server uh, where I'm going to start collecting email addresses. So if you want to get some newsletters, some information and notifications of uh, when we're going to be going live, uh, feel free to uh, give me your email also. And so with that, we'll go ahead and play some outro music. Uh, my name is John Jacobs, W7DBO, and this is the Field Radio Podcast. And thank you for clicking and tuning in. 73.